Hello, this video introduces continuous random variables, probabilities, and then normal distributions. So first remember that a random variable could be a discrete random variable or a continuous random variable. And a continuous random variable is a random variable that takes values in an interval. So you wouldn't be able to list off all the values um, you would have to describe it with an interval or maybe a whole bunch of intervals. So for example, the percent chance of snow, that's anywhere between zero and 100. So to calculate the um, probabilities associated with a continuous random variable, we use something called a PDF or a probability density function. And what we do with that PDF is we find the area under it. So for example, say that we have, this is the PDF for our random variable X. And we want to find the probability that X is between A and B. Then what we would need to do is mark off A, mark off B, and this purple area right there would represent the probability that X is between A and B. As another one, let's do between 0 and 15. The probability that Y is between 0 and 15 is that area there. So um, if we have like a pretty nice looking PDF, then this is pretty easy to do. So for example, if we just have a, what's called a uniform PDF, then we can just um, take the area under it and the area is just a rectangle. So say we're doing our chance of snow one and that on some particular Minnesota day, it takes probabilities between zero and one, with um, equal probability. And we wanna know the probability that there is between a 20 and 50% chance of snow. Then this purple area here would represent that probability. And since this function would have height one over 100 here, we could calculate this probability is just the area of that rectangle. And we know that the area of the rectangle is the base times the height. This base has width 30, or in other words, 50 minus 20, and it has height one over 100. So the probability that we'd um, have a probability of between 20 and 50% chance of snow is 50 minus 20 over 100, or in other words, 30%. Okay, now let's move into a very special shape of PDF, and that is a normal distribution, or sometimes called a Gaussian distribution. And it looks a little bit something like this. We can see that it's um, bell-shaped. You also hear this called a bell curve. And it has mu, it's mean in the center. And it's symmetric about this point. So in other words, if I rotated this, flipped it so that this point is over here and this point over here, we would see symmetry. So if we put a mirror down the middle, it would reflect and look exactly the same right to left. So it has um, center mu and then we can calculate probabilities from this normal distribution, just like we did with other continuous distributions by looking at the PDF. So we can calculate the area under the curve. So let's do A to B here. The probability that our random variable is between A and B is that purple shaded area there. Now, um, calculating these areas can be a little bit um, tedious, but we have some like known shortcuts. In particular, we have something called the 68, 95, 99.7% rule. And what this says is that if we look within one standard deviation of the mean, so mu plus sigma mu minus sigma, then in this zone, we'll have about 68% of our distribution. So here's 68%. 
In other words, this is saying that let's have our random variable be called x. The probability that x is between mu minus 1 sigma and mu plus sigma is equal to about 68% or 0.68. So 68%, that's the first one, one standard deviation. When we go to two standard deviations, we'll see 95% roughly, and three standard deviations, we'll see 99.7% roughly. So just drawing those picks here, here's our normal centered at mu, and then go out two standard deviations, mu minus two sigma, mu plus two sigma, and this purple shaded region has probability 98, 95%. So again, writing this, we could say that the probability that x is between mu minus two sigma and mu plus two sigma is about 0.95. And then finally, we can draw the same picture for three standard deviations out. Mu minus three sigma, mu plus three sigma, and this purple shaded area hits almost everything. It hits 99.7% of our distribution. So in other words, the probability that x is between mu minus 3 sigma and mu plus 3 sigma is about 0.997. Okay, so we can use this um, in a whole bunch of applications. So let's say that grades um, for an exam follow a normal curve. with mean 75% and standard deviation 5%. Let's figure out the probability of students who get 80% or higher. So what proportion of students earn 80% or higher? Okay, so let's draw this out. We know that our mean is 75% and standard deviation sigma equals 5%. So if we look at mu plus one sigma, that would be 75 plus five or 80. And then here's 75 minus 5, or in other words, 70. Now, we know that according to our 68, 95, 99.7% rule, that in this shaded area here, we have about 68%. And we know the total area under this curve is 100%. So if the total area under the curve is 100%, and this much of it is 68%, then 100 minus 68 equals 32% is left over, and it's split evenly between these two tails because the normal distribution is symmetric. So this tail has 16%, and this tail has 16%. And this is exciting because this is the tail that we're looking for because we want to know what proportion of students earn 80% or higher. So we're looking for the probability that X is greater than 80, which if you take calculus, you'll learn is actually the same thing as probability X is greater than or equal to 80. So this pink area is exactly what we're looking for, 16%. So we have found that 16% of students earn 80% or higher. 
similarly, because this down here is 16%, then we know that 16% of students earn 70% or lower. And if we have 70 to 80% is a C, then the probability that a student gets a C is 68% or 0.68. So we can find probabilities using this 68, 95, 99.7% rule. Okay, let's do another example. Say that the professor says um, anyone who um, earns a 70 or higher gets a lollipop. How many, like what proportion of people are going to get a lollipop? So we're looking for the probability that X is greater than 70. Let's go back to this picture here. We're looking for the probability that X is greater than 70. Clean this up a little bit. Okay, so if we want the probability X is greater than 70, then we want to find this pink area here. And earlier we said that this was 68% and this was 16%. Therefore, the probability that X is greater than 70 is 0.68 plus 0.16. So 0.84. So about 84% of the students will get a lollipop. All right, so that's our basics about the normal distribution. Um, we will get a little bit more practice with that in class.